All right. Hey, guys. It is Nicole Anderson Land, and this is our Stay Wild Child uh, weekly little broadcast, and I'm excited. Um, I would say the lady I'm about to introduce, who you can already see on the screen, obviously, but uh, <laughs> Jessica Allstrom, she has... She has aided the most insight and the most awakening to my growth in the fastest manner over these last couple of years than anybody else that I can think of. And so I'm really excited that uh, Jessica was able to jump on and join us today because I know like you are going to get so much out of this conversation with her. So, hey, Jessica, thanks for coming today. So good to see you, Nicole. Good to see you, too. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So um, let's talk uh, just a little bit. Um, I, so the, the meaning of this group, it's called Stay Wild Child. And I have found just in you know, my own personal growth that I kind of forgot who I was before the world told me who I was supposed to be, right? And so... I was stuck in kind of this like a uh, performance piece where like, you know, oh, there's Nicole. She's the hard worker. You know, there's Nicole. She's the fun mom. There's Nicole. She's the, um, you know, when the, all these labels, right? All these labels that I'd put on myself and like stuck in this like little performance piece. And I think probably in my forties, early forties, maybe late thirties, I started thinking, man, is this really who I am? Like, it seems like there's got to be more here. And, and I, you know, I, I attribute probably yoga to some of that, um, that, you know, helping with that chatter that kind of runs through your brain. But um, I think that so many women kind of get stuck in, and they just, they just don't remember who they are before the world told them who they were supposed to be. And then they'll tune in and they'll see women like you and they might see women like me and think, Oh, well, like they've always had their shit together, right? Like, uh, like they've always, they've always been like, uh, you know, know what they wanted out of life and they've always been on this mission and this purpose. But I, I love to take people back kind of to the beginning of the story, um, to that place where, um, like, where were you before you became, um, cause I mean, you're, you're international and, um, you know, you speak to audience, huge audiences across the world and, you know, you, you run all these amazing workshops and you, uh, teach teachers to be teachers and you have so many gifts that you, um, in, give to everyone. And so where were you before that? Who was Jessica before she started these quantum revolution tours and these trainings and this guide? Um, who, who were you before that? Um, well, I mean, broken, you know, lost, um, abused, abandoned, rejected, you know, and, and I think that the generation that we're in now as women, we didn't really, we don't have really opportunity to play weakness as our strength. We've had to play strength and hide weakness. And, you know, it's like you, you know, people look at you and they're like, oh, you're beautiful. You've got your things together. You know, they might look at me and be like, oh, she's not struggled. You know, and then they hear my backstory and they hear your backstory and they're like, wait, there's more in common here. You know, there's more story alignment here than meets the eye. Because again, what you see on the front most of the time is someone surviving their life. You know, you don't necessarily know what goes behind on closed doors. And, you know, you get the highlight reel on social media of, you know, the happy brunch that everyone's at, but you don't get the fight that happens right after or right before or the triggers or, you know, the feeling of insecurities and things like that. And so for me, it was, you know, I, I was in such a survival situation as a child that I don't really think that I had time to decide who I was. Mm -hmm. It was more of how do I survive this next moment? And how do I do that with, um, you know, how do I do that and feel important? How do I do that and feel loved? How do I do that and feel seen and heard? And so for me, it, like you said, you were kind of like that performer, but for me, I took on the role of a rescuer. And I, the way that I kind of valued myself, my, I created identity for myself, even as a really, like, even as a toddler was to be helpful mm -hmm. and to take care of people and to be a good girl, which somehow I still didn't manage to do that. But, you know, it's like, it, it's like, okay, I'm just going to be the best version of what everybody thinks I need to be 
And because I'm a Gemini, I can really do that chameleon thing really well without even noticing I'm doing it where I'm like, oh, I'm going to be this for you and I'll be this for you and then I'll be this for you. And, and never once, probably until I was 35, did I even realize that there, there could be something for me, like there could be choice. You know, choice wasn't something that you even really put together until you start to, you know, go on your awareness journey and start to kind of pull back and be like, do I like that band? Do I like that color? Like, you know, you like it, so I like it, you know, and for me, it was like, how do I survive this next moment? You know, all my relationships were based on that viewpoint. Raising my children was based on that viewpoint. So there was never, there was never any real presence because I was trying to be in the future to avoid the past. So it was always like, I was just jumping ahead of myself. Therefore, I never really had to meet myself in the moment. And people who struggle to be in the present moment are actually struggling with this particular wound. It's, it's not that they can't be in the present and they can't quiet their mind and they can't still themselves. It's just not safe. So it's, if you look at the fact that the present moment might not be safe for you, and that's why you're having a hard time existing there, that's going to bring light and awareness to something that you might be judging yourself. Well, I just can't get the stillness or I can't get in the present moment. No, it's protecting you because if you were in the present moment, you would have to really look in the mirror and be like, who am I right now? What am I actually feeling right now? Like what's happening around me right now? Is this okay? Because as we survive that next moment, we start to have an abusive relationship with time where you'll notice there's too much time or you're running out of time right? Money is kind of like, again, it's that chasing series of, of highs and lows and just enough. Um, relationships are, you know, desire for intense love and connection and, and getting a mediocre, lukewarm, you know, feedback. And, and this happens throughout the, the, the whole stem of our lives when we're not present, because when we're not present, we can't operate as who we truly are, we have to operate in either who we are trying to be, who we want to be, or who we're avoiding to be. Mm. So with that, it's like not very many people you're going to meet in this life that are not doing this work are actually going to have any clue of who they are, which right. can bring us back as teachers into a compassionate place of, of not being so judgmental on them because they're doing the best they can from where they are. They don't know what they don't know. Right. So for me, I was kind of like you, you know, 35, it was like, I was just watching this hamster wheel and everything I tried to do to create that stuff called happiness, just, it, it created more of like an instant gratification, but then more problems. So I was like solving my life problems with new problems, like getting more into debt, having more kids, trying the marriage thing one more time, you know, trying to lose that extra 10 pounds, you know, you know, all of the things that we're, we're trying to say, well, if I do this, it'll be better. If I do this, it'll be better. If I say this, if I wear this, if I have this, if I, if I choose this. And, and really, it's never going to get better if you don't know actually who you are in that present moment. So I went on this journey when I was 35. And it, um, it, it was, I mean, it's the hardest work we'll ever do. And I think anybody that's doing this work can, can acknowledge the fact that yeah, it's, it's amazing, you know, the self-realization that comes with the work that we're doing, but it is hard and it's sticky and it's messy and it is, it is gut-wrenching and it is heartbreaking and it is destructive. And it is all of those things that need to happen in order to find out who we were, like you said, before the world told us no. Right. And so for me, it was like a series of trial and error because I didn't have a teacher. One of the things about me in childhood was I was so codependent that I didn't know what color I liked. I didn't know, you know, I didn't know my favorite food. I didn't, I knew what your favorite food is and therefore I like that, you know? So when I kind of came into this understanding that thoughts create your reality, I said, no more. Mm -hmm. I will never listen to someone else's opinion about what is supposed to be inside of me. Even if it takes me the rest of my life, if there is something inside of me that has answers, I'm going to look there first. Right. So I kind of avoided the traditional spiritual route of the guru or the yoga teachers or the books or the YouTube videos and just kept knocking away at my own presence. Like what's happening in this present moment? Like how is this person showing up to me? Because I understood at the basis of the universe that it's reflective. So right. cause and effect, right? Law of attraction, law of projection, law of reflection. So I was like, okay, these are my tools. These are the only tools I'm going to use. 
and anybody else's perspective about it, they're processing it through their filters of who they believe they are. So if mm -hmm. I take their word, then I'm now going, okay, I might use that as a confirmation piece at, at some point, but it's not really allowing me to learn to trust my intuition. Right. So for the past nine years, basically what I've been doing is going really deep within and asking myself those hard questions, forcing myself to be present, taking responsibility for all the times that I played the victim, that I played the narcissist, that I played the bully, that I played the abandoner, that I rejected, and then also went into that healing space of all those times that had happened to me because we really are duality. We are we are cause and effect. We are yin and yang. We are heads and tails. So we're having like constantly these two realities where we're being the effect and we're being the cause. Right. So we have to look at as creators, you know, what we're causing through our actions, words, belief systems, and action, you know, and, and beliefs, uh, behaviors. And then we also have to look at what we're believing about how people are behaving towards us. So for mm -hmm. me, I kind of got rid of all of life's distraction. I went deep into the shadow work. Um, that gave me a really fast opportunity to trust myself. It opened up, you know, a lot of my intuitive gifts because I wasn't, you know, going and getting a certification from another teacher to do it. Now it's funny. It's ironic that I'm a teacher who gives certifications, but <laughs> right. Cause I'm like, don't yeah. do this with anybody. But, <laughs> but at the same time, you know, my, my situation was like life or death. You know, and it was such a deep level of codependency for me that I, it, I would have continued to lose myself in someone else's religion or someone else's ideals or someone else's yoga beliefs. And I wanted to, I wanted to kind of get my hands dirty in the clay and try everything. You yeah. know, so I would, I would be the one who would take the yoga class and sit in the back and not, you know, go to any of the luncheons. And I would, you know, kind of peek and listen and, and, and reflect my reality to see if I was doing it right. But at the end right. of the day, I knew I was getting it right because I was happier and I was happy for no reason. And money started cleaning itself up and it started flowing from unusual spaces. And I started knowing what to say when people were in front of me to basically mirror their consciousness. Mm -hmm. And I was really receptive to people mirroring their consciousness back to me and how I could feed that back. And, 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 and basically like I, and I say this and it sounds horrible, but I never did any of this work to have this career. Like mm -hmm. I never thought in a million years that I would be talking to you in 2020, you know, after finishing basically a year and a half world tour talking about these things, I really was just like, I'm crazy and I need to stop being crazy. Like I am like heartbroken and I need to feel, heal my heart. I am psychotic, you know, but, and I don't know how to be sane. I mean, these were the reasons that I started this journey and and I had uh, fibromyalgia, which is an autoimmune disease. Right. Um, and again, to me, all disease is dis-ease, a body that's malfunctioning too long. That comes from first and foremost, I don't care what the doctors say, it's emotional, physical, chemical, right? Right. So it starts at that emotional place of disconnect. And as soon as we mm -hmm. disconnect from ourselves, pain is a guide back to ourselves. Right. Illness is a guide back to ourselves. Mm -hmm. So I used my autoimmune disease at 35 to stop because I had to, you know, it's like people tell me, ask me all the time, what should I eat? What should I eat? And I go, okay, remember the last time you were sick? And they're like, yeah. I'm like, what did you eat? Well, I ate what my body told me I could eat. Good. Right. Let's go back to that point. Because when you're sick, you're actually listening, right? When yeah. you're in pain, you're actually listening. So we manifest pain and illness and breakups and heartbreaks and broken bank accounts, because that gets our conscious awareness that gets us into the present moment. We have to be like, okay, what's happening right now? So right. I started to use like my autoimmune disease as my greatest teacher, because mm -hmm. if you guys didn't know anything about fibromyalgia, it's one of those weird diseases that doctors are like, like they can't understand it because your whole body hurts. Right. It feels like every fiber on your body is just aching. And basically the stem and cause of it is a nervous system that's completely blown out because you've been in fight or flight for 35 years straight. Right. And you're, you're, you're just, your system is just glitched. And so I knew that if I was going to heal myself, I was going to have to manually get myself out of fight or flight with my mind because mm -hmm. 
my relationship was toxic. My money was toxic. My kids were toxic at the time. I was toxic to my kids. So I was going to have to get myself out of fight or flight here, not here. It wasn't like I could retreat. So I started to learn, again, another form of going within. So now, fast forward, you know, I've, I'm definitely still on my journey. I wouldn't say that anybody is damn near enlightened at that point. And if they say they are with any sort of attitude, they're not. You know what I mean? It's like, right. it's like we kind of get to a new, we get to a new level point of, of awareness. And then it's like, wow, I know nothing. And I would say that that's kind of where I came to be in 2020 is like this really humble space of, wow, I'm really, I'm going to be a beginner again this year. And how do I feel about that in this new time and this new energy as a healed person who knows herself, but knows nothing about anything, you know? And it's like, creating these new workshops. Cause to me, if I can get to that humble space, then I can produce really good material for the world. If I, I've got this, I know how to do this. I'm the most powerful, you know, it's like, that's all BS. None of us have it right. You know, and we're working through opening our heart this year. Mm. And that is, it is the Holy grail of why we're here. And it is the most difficult thing to do because it's like you said, when you opened this conversation is, when the world tells you that it isn't okay to be yourself, it is the ultimate heartbreak. Mm -hmm. So then you try your whole life being what someone would love. Right. And, and when we return to that original heartbreak of having to abandon ourselves for the world, we realize that all we've really been doing is building walls to protect ourselves. And that's why we're not powerful manifestors or that's why we're not, easily healing because we don't remember building the walls to protect our heart, to keep us safe Mm. from the world telling us no. So it's really, it's cool because 2020 is all about the vision quest. It's all about vision quest, going down deep into the heart space, find out where exactly you built these big walls, where you've built these survival mechanisms, how things are, are staying away from you to keep you safe. Right? Because again, Sometimes having a bunch of money would keep you completely distracted. You know, right. having, having um, exactly what you need would keep you too comfortable. And mm. there's a higher power within you that's saying, you don't really do anything great when you're in that comfort zone. So right. it can make you slightly uncomfortable all the time. Yeah. And, and, then, and then we're able to grow. So, I mean, that's, I think, where we all are this year, regardless sure. of your status in the universe, right? It's, it's about, okay, okay, world, it's time for us to open our heart. And it's not about doing the right thing or the wrong thing in that. It is about finding out who we are and what the condition of our actual heart is and taking responsibility for that because no one's coming to rescue us. We know, right? We get in these marriages and we think it's going to be everything we need to heal. And all it does is trigger all the pain that was already there. You know, we have the kids thinking, oh, this is going to be my unconditional love. And we realize that they're just here to love and unconditionally love themselves and love us conditionally and and, and unconditionally at the same time, but not be our saviors. Our jobs are not our saviors. Our money is not our saviors. Our best friend that we vent to when we need to feel empowered is not the savior. What we realize is we're always going to return back to the scene of where we abandon ourselves and your body's going to do that. Your money's going to do that. Your time's going to do that. Your relationships are going to be the perfect mirror to show you exactly where you have abandoned yourself. And that's really where we are right now with our collective right here in this month, February in the middle of mercury retrograde. Right. Yes. And it's like, everything is just lined up perfectly. Like, okay, now here you go. Take a look. And we're like, I don't want to look. (laughs) I mean, wouldn't you feel that for you as well this year? Absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. It's, 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 it's this, it's this beautiful year of, I feel like, you know, this beautiful four year of like building and expansion yet. It's also that deep dive into self. You explained something to me uh, one time, um, I think we, we were doing a mentorship together and you talked about um, you, you, 
because you were just talking about teachers and guides and you talked about, you know, there being a bridge basically mm -hmm. and everybody's just in a different place on their bridge. And so, you know, so like I might be here on the bridge and you might be here, right? You're just, you've just kind of gone through that, that self healing and that self love journey. You just, you've just dug just a little bit deeper, but there's all these people who are just starting to step on this bridge. And so, so those of us that are ahead on the bridge, basically, we have the opportunity to guide the others forward on the bridge. And that's, that, exactly, does that make sense? Yes. And okay. that, that is why I train teachers. Right. Because teachers always come to me and they say, well, I mean, you're already doing it. So why would I want to do this? And I'm going, no, 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 you don't understand. Let's look at the traditional education model, right? We've got a kindergarten teacher, first grade teacher. We have all the way up to the professor and the PhD teachers. And none of those teachers are less valuable or less important for the journey because there is a stop and a start place. And that kindergarten is about foundation and it's about nurturing and it's about basic motor skills. And it's about, it's like, it's, it's the most important thing. Like you can't have a PhD without having that kindergarten. So if we looked at everything as a nonlinear, everything is completely in perfect value. It is what we assign ourselves that devalue what we're teaching or where we are as teachers. Exactly. Because what I'm saying is, is, you know, I'm 44 years old, four kids, you know, two marriages. Not everybody is going to resonate with this, right? And the way that I'm... I'm teaching, you know, quantum theory because I choose to teach at a certain level right. because that's my highest joy. Not because I'm better at it as a teacher. It's just, that's my more highest joy. Like that's what I love teaching. Just like some people love teaching yoga and they love teaching. And it's all this really important part of the puzzle. There's mm -hmm. no hierarchy. There's no guruship. There's no leadership. It's all about us stepping forward in what we love teaching. It's like, we, that's where we are on the chain of command, not of who is like where everyone is. Because when I was a first grade teacher, um, it was the most important job I had because I was helping them get to the second grade. Right. You know what I mean? And it yeah, was like totally. all those emotional things that they were learning with their bodies and having that safe space to talk to someone and, and be an example in that space. It was like, you, you, it's what I always teach eyes on your own paper. And if it is your highest joy, then that is what you teach. Because when I first started, it was like first grade, I taught first grade. Then I started teaching nutrition and health. And I thought that was the absolute end. Then it was biochemistry. Then it was emotional clearing. And now it's quantum theory. So it's like, we also have this opportunity as we learn and grow and change as teachers to begin to teach different classrooms. Yes. Right. And, and we're all equally important and value because if you don't show up because you think I'm doing it, we might miss that grade. We might not have anybody to teach that grade. We might not have that 10th grade teacher or that 12th grade teacher because you're like, well, she's already got it. You see how that's, that's really limited thinking. And that's why I'm always telling my teachers, step up, step up because you love teaching manifestation. Great. I don't, I already taught that. You, you, know, right. you love teaching yoga. Good. You love teaching shamanism. Awesome. We need all of these pieces. Absolutely. And because we're telling different testimony through our work, there's 8 billion people in the world, right? They're going to resonate differently. There's going to be women and men that resonate with you and your style of teaching that will not at all resonate with me. And I love that because guess what you and I can do? We can affect yeah. more of the cause. We can create a bigger connection because you're being you and I'm being me authentically. And that's mm -hmm. going to draw the people in that more resonate. And look at that word resonate home. She feels like home. He feels like home. Because when you feel that home heart connection, you begin to feel safe. You begin to tap in. You begin to do your work. Not everybody's going to feel safe with me. Right. Right. You know what I mean? And so it's like, I have this call to action and this is why I have this teacher training program is, is you're not teaching how to be me. Right. I'm teaching and reminding you basically how to be yourself more efficiently, like how to show up completely and own your classroom. Don't be looking in someone else's classroom and being like, well, what are they doing? Well, they get to do chemistry. No, you get to do life science. Let's focus. Right. Right. Because right that is right. what that collective needs. 
So I, I hope that anybody that's listening that is a, some sort of teacher that has any sort of comparison or judgment towards their own work, that use this conversation that Nicole and I are having as an opportunity to, to step into who you are, because the world needs all of us, not Absolutely. anyone left out. The world needs every one of us, and we all have a different way of showing up for the world, and it's not always teaching. You probably, you probably said this, oh, I don't know, maybe a hundred times before it finally entered, it, it finally entered my brain and made sense. Um, you made the statement, eyes on your own paper. And I thought, how many freaking times have I heard that in my life? And finally, one day, I wrote it down. I'm like, shit, eyes on your own paper. Wow, that makes so much sense. But, you know, I, I think that's that way in, you know, all of your learning journeys. You know, you, you can't hear that message until you're ready to hear the message. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I think we get caught in that comparison trap, and especially, you know, social media as, as a lot to do with it. Although I think, I think social media is the biggest gift because I never would have met you if I hadn't been on social media. Right. Mm -hmm. And I never would have had this, you know, huge epiphany in growth experience, honestly, because a lot of things um, that you talked about, I, I didn't quite understand them at the beginning, but it was, it was like, you kind of were like home. It was like, okay, like I'm really, resonating with her. I can see something in her that's, you know, reflecting back to me. And it, it makes sense, sort of, like not all of your language totally <laughs> made sense, but I can't, but it was enough to where I wanted to keep digging in and listening. And so, um, yeah, it's that just the eyes on your own paper, because we, we can, we can get caught in comparison because maybe somebody moved a little bit faster or maybe somebody you know, just took a chance on themselves just right. a little bit better, right? And right. Like totally freaking stepping out in fear, but went ahead and stepped out. Right. Well, you know, it's kind of like when you're driving and there's a lot of chaos happening, you know, mm -hmm. and it's like, it's starting to get dark. So you, you don't have quite your vision and, and cars are coming this way. And then there's cars going that way. And it's like, if you don't really get in your own lane mm -hmm. and pay attention, you ain't going to make it bottom line. Right. And it's the same way with energy because we're social creatures. So we have a tendency to blend energy fields very easily when we're, when we're not really self-focused and present. You know, we're, we're, what's going on over there and what's going on over there? And it comes back to our original conversation. If you don't know who you are, you don't know what your paper looks like. So a lot of the journey is this, this figuring out what your paper looks like. And that's why I have a teacher training program because they're going, well, I don't even know what my paper looks like, so I don't know what I'm supposed to teach, right? Yeah, yeah. And so figuring out what your paper is, is the most important thing. And then being able to go, okay, now all I have to do is stay in my lane and work off of this paper and use everybody else as an inspiration. And if they trigger me, work back within that and go find where that is within me but eyes on my own paper. And I'm, I'm gonna tell you, because I mean, I think we've all, as we've kind of come up you know, it's like, I, I knew I was doing really important work a few years ago and I didn't have like a big, huge following. And I never put a dime of, of money into like Facebook ads or marketing or anything. Because for me, it was like, I, I don't want people to be pushed on to my work. I want them to find me organically and connect with me like through that resonant field. And whether you have 2,500 followers or 25 million, it's, it's the transparency of your soul that's going to be the message anyways. And, and so when I realized that, because I was watching these other teachers around me, you know, all of a sudden their, their YouTube videos were like 2 million people. And I'm like, and I said that way easier to understand than they said it. And then I was like, hold on a second, right? Eyes on my own paper. You know, it's like, I might not be ready to handle 2 million people. You know what I mean? So it's like, I had to honor my inner child and say, you know, cause again, when you start to speak your truth, people who are not ready to hear that truth have something to say about it. And it's like, we also have to take into consideration that we're teachers that are also on a healing journey. Right. And, and we are, are doing this work simultaneously while we're teaching it. So it's, it's like a first grade teacher that's also going to first grade. And so we have to be really kind to ourselves when we're teaching because we're learning too. And 
it's like if we if we go too fast or we work off someone else's paper, we might not be ready for that experience. And it might completely take us out of the game where we don't want to do anything. You know, it's like, you know, you get that one hater comment or someone doesn't understand your work or I don't know why people follow her or whatever. And it's like, you know, you, you may be tough and we may be survivors, but we're still little girls inside and it does hurt. And we have to, we have to sit with that. So for, for me, it's like the eyes on your own paper. It's like, once you actually unlock your truth, your gifts will feed you, they will clothe you, they will take care of you. You will be paid abundantly in the universe to be yourself. And whether that's 2 million people or 2,500 people or two people, you'll find that you're still, you're still creating the reality that you want, but you're doing it in a way that's safe for you. You know, and, and, and that's kind of my message for teachers is, let's work off our own paper once we learn what it is. Let's go authentically and do it the right way where we're being the example and not just being philosophers and, and teaching content that we're not living, right? right. right. Um, because with social media, you know, you can't really hide the truth for very long. So it's like people who are not truly authentic don't have longevity in this world because this is a very authentic community that we're in. So it people is. who grow their businesses too quickly and, you know, have take out a hundred thousand dollar loan to like, you know, go do certain things. And you're looking at that going, wow, she's growing really rapidly. You don't know what's going on behind closed doors. And right. you don't know if you would be ready to grow that rapidly while you're still taking certain tests. So I, I always say, you know, be really kind to yourself because if you just show up, which is what I'm so proud of you, I've just watched you over the last year. It's like, no matter what's happening in your life, you show up. I do. You, you show up. <laughs> And, I, and that's a secret ingredient, you guys, is no matter what's going on, it's almost like some of your best work is going to be coming from those deep parts of hell. Like your best teachings, your most humble moments, your greatest aha inspirations are not going to come from, hey, guys, I just got my nails done and everything's great. It's like I was in the depths of hell today and let me share because I know a lot of other women go through that. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? So it's, it's eyes on your own paper. Is, it's, it's the ultimate self-love. Because you're, what you're saying is, is I'm important and what I am is important. And my, my focus and my vision on what I can create. And yeah, I might look at other people for inspiration. Mm -hmm. But if I start to go into comparison or judgment or envy, something's off. And I've mm -hmm. got to return back to my own heart here. And mm -hmm. it's, it's a feedback. It's a great feedback system because we it all is. are human. So we return back, eyes on your own paper. What is it? What does it make the, me come alive? What is it? that I do that I'm really good at. And then you just tweak it and you tweak it and you move from amateur and rookie to, you know, to pro. And then the pros become coaches and teachers. And it's just, this is how the world is healing itself Absolutely. is through people saying, I don't have to be perfect to start doing this. Right. I think that, you know, you've used the word uh, cheat codes um, many times through your through your teaching and your guiding mm -hmm. and, um, you know, implementing those little cheat codes. That's why that's why I go live even when I maybe don't feel like it, but I've. I've quieted my mind, I've tuned in, and I have this overwhelming nudge to go live and talk about that topic. Even though I'm not totally prepared, I don't exactly know what's going to come out of my mouth. Um, but I feel like somebody might be able to get a little nugget from it that might just help them through the rest of their day. And, you know, that, that might be a little, like a little seed of inspiration for them to, um, oh, shit, man, I'm going through the same thing. And, yeah. um, you know, and, oh, okay, so there is hope, right? <laughs> there is, there is, um, there is a way to move past this. And, and, you know, and I really, I didn't know much about the self-love journey until probably within the last few years. Um, I thought self-love was selfish. I actually talked to um, Kristen about this. I, I thought that maybe self-love was like selfish. And so yes. it's this, um, it's this exploration of going right. in and uh, allowing yourself to, to heal and not think that that's selfish, right? This like, well, thing we're, we're, yeah, I mean, we're totally trained. It's funny. It's like, we, we live in such duality that we're trained against loving ourselves. We're taught to be selfless, yeah. right? And then selfishness is, you know, it's wrong. But what all that does is it strips away our natural intuitive guidance systems 
so that we need to rely on each other. And that keeps a very sedative, very slaveristic, that's a word, community. And mm. therefore we all kind of have to depend on, our, our, on each other for, for missing pieces of ourselves because we were taught to not put ourselves back together and once we start doing that, that's why, you know, language is, it, language is a big, a big deal for, you know, triggers and, and the body. So when you say selfish, it, it doesn't feel good to any part of you. Right. So, you know, you change your language to self-focused. It's like, and it's like, if you're driving a car, is it self-focused to keep my eyes on my lane? Mm. Right. Or should I be wondering what the other driver is doing it while I'm driving all crazy? It's like, if you look at different metaphors around the same concept, you can see that it's really just about making sure that you get to where you need to be and you're safe doing it by looking at where you're going, right? And it's not selfishness because I can't be a good parent if I am not a good, happy person. No matter what I do outwardly to express good parenting, energy exposes itself. I'm going to exactly. manifest chaos around my children no matter how hard I work to not if I am not in that space of self-love and self-care. Right. So of course we have to then learn, I think most of us have like these, you know, shifts in our thirties or even younger now, the kids that are coming in. They are, right. Way, and, and they're getting it at twenties, God love them. And yeah. they're figuring it out that, yeah. that, you know, eyes on their own paper is the way to be. And the world is gonna change very rapidly. And it, it sounds like an oxymoron because you're like, well, how am I gonna help the world with my eyes on my own paper? It's like, be a good driver right? Mm -hmm. The way you're going to actually keep the road safe is keep your eyes on your own lane, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, you look at that metaphor, you're like, duh, it makes perfect sense. But it's also a biohack and it's a cheat code because when you actually focus on your highs, lows, your triggers, your pain, all those things, you begin to clear it out. Now you have new levels of wisdom where you can teach, Absolutely. Now, like you said, I can show up and go live and I don't exactly know what I'm going to talk about, but the world bonds through commiseration. Mm. So when you say, Hey guys, I'm going through pain. All of a sudden now everybody's got your attention because everyone wants to give you some compassion or someone's going, Hey, I'm going through that too. You've just linked up with your story. That's why your testimony, your story, although completely invalid moving forward is important to bridge the gap between where people are and where they can be because it allows them to know that, well, she can do it. I can do it. She's yeah. going through the same things or she went through the same things and she came out on the other side. I trust her. Right. Yeah. Right. So it is, that's, that's, that's our work is to be as transparently in the thick of things as possible while keeping an open heart and teaching what it is that we do learn. It's like, I tell people, don't wait until you're perfect to teach. Don't wait until you have manifested a million dollars before you teach about money. Don't, you know, heal everything about your body before you start being, we're using your healing energy. Because I really feel like part of our healing journey is working within and part of our healing journey is giving it away. So it's mm -hmm. like a two part experience. Right. So if you do one or the other, you'll, you'll get sick either way. It's like breath. It has to come in and it has to go out. So your healing journey is in two big parts. It's in first, I'm going to heal myself. Then I'm going to give it away. Then I'm going to heal myself. Then I'm going to give it away. And then what happens is you put that into the collective. You put that, it's a ripple effect. Now people have different ways of experiencing reality and they're going, oh, well, I can do this too. Remembrance happens. Remember, put yourself back together. So yeah, I mean, you, you got it. And that's the thing that I admire the most about even being on, on your show a year later after we do a mentorship, it's like, you know, now you get to, you, you get to be the teacher and I get to come to your class. And that is, <laughs> to me, this is why I'm doing this work. You know, it's like to see the results of this and to see what you can create and to, and you're doing it in your own lane with your own vibe and your own style and your own sass and your own stories and you're affecting change in the world. And I mean, that's really where we are right now. It's like, everybody just needs to just do that and stop worrying about what someone else is doing. That's exactly right. Right. Just, just tune in and, and focus on, you know, what's important to you. I remember um, we were in our mentorship and um, what, one of the first sessions we had, you said something about, well, you're in victim mode. And mm -hmm. I'm like, what the? <laughs> what? What? 
I'm not. <laughs> I am not, but you know, but, but you, you triggered me a little bit that day, obviously, but then you know, but then, for everyone, it's okay. It's part of my job, <laughs> but, but, it, but it brought me, you know, it brought me to this awareness to, um, to dig in and say, okay, why am I in this victim mode? And why am I taking this shit so personally? And, and what are these old wounds that I need to heal from the past? And what do I need to, you know, think about and look about? And, and, it, and I was in a place that, you know, I was open to hearing your mm -hmm. message at that time. And so that's exactly what I try to do. And, you know, in Stay Wild Child, it's just, there's going to be a handful of people who are going to be open to hearing that message at that time. And that might spark their awareness journey. And then I, I know for, you know, a lot of women, um, like we talked about that self-love piece, it's, 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 it's hard for us to think about because we're in such caretaker modes of taking care of so many other people, but exactly what you said, and I think I'm probably really spinning all around here, but um, exactly what you said, because I remember my son, um, we had left, we had left my, um, my marriage and uh, we had moved into an apartment and he was eight years old and he's like, Oh mommy, I love living here. And I go, you do? Cause we were in a you know, big ass house. We were in 5,000 square foot home. It was awesome. A great pad. And uh, we moved into this apartment and he goes, Oh mommy, I love living here. And I go, you do? And he's like, yeah. He goes, you're happy here. And I go, what? And he goes, yeah, yeah you don't, you don't cry all the time. See? I had no idea that he noticed or recognized any of that because I thought I was being like a great cover up, you know? Mm -hmm. And so um, it's true. It's, it's when we have this gift of healing our own hearts, that's when that expansion just happens and uh, we're able to impact so many more people. So um, I've, I've just, um, I've so enjoyed this journey and, uh, you know, it is a journey because it's a never ending thing. It's, um, it's just this journey of expansion and um, just healing and love. And you just step into it a little bit more each and every time. And, um, and like you said, these Mercury retrogrades are a great time to um, revisit, uh, reflect, <laughs> check in, see what's working, see what's not. And how can we move forward in expansion to not only help ourselves, but um, aid to the healing and the awakening of others? So, well, and also, and also take it one step further on that. You know, I, I want to remind everybody that it's not always about moving forward. That's been mm -hmm. a real big okay. safety program. Okay. Like for me, like just keep it going, move forward, one foot in front of the other. For me too. Yeah. It's it's how we stay safe, right? Just keep right. Smiling. There's retrogrades are essential, you know, they, they can happen three, four times a year, but this particular year we're going to have it in every single planet mm -hmm. and every planet's going to go retrograde this year. Right. Mm -hmm. Or at least everybody's, I might be completely wrong by that, but that's from what I'm tapping into, we're all going to get our retrograde in some form or another. And right. it's about not moving on. It's about, okay, what do I need to go and sit with and what do I need to be present with and where do I need to stop moving on? You know, okay. because moving on is an addiction, right? Mm -hmm. Moving on to the next relationship and the next job and the next certification and the next house and the next dollar. And it, it's always going to be just the next moment. So if we can go, where am I actually running away from mm -hmm. right now? Because I'm telling you guys, this is the year of the heart opening. And it's not just a year. It's the beginning of an accelerated process deep into the broken heart within you. So mm -hmm. people think that we're going to open our heart. But what we're actually doing is, is we're returning to the broken heart. We're returning to the broken heart. And we're going to, like an alchemist, put a bunch of light and love inside of our own brokenness. Because people go, oh, you know, your heart breaks so the light can get in. I go, no, the heart breaks so the light can get out, right? Mm -hmm. okay. It's it's very different than what people right. are actually thinking because we build walls around broken. You know, when your arm hurts and you don't want anybody to tap it, you're like, don't touch me, right? So if my heart hurts, I'm not actually going to let anybody really that close to me. I'm going to build this facade. I'm going to build beauty and I'm going to build money and I'm going to build power and I'm going to build this story 
because nobody's getting in here. Or I'm going to build a victim story. I'm going to build a body illness. I'm going to build being broke. So no one can actually see what I'm really experiencing. So we build these stories around our broken heart. And that's what my new workshop is going to be about. It's, it's going to be really intense. It's called the vision quest. And it's all about going into these different places inside the heart and, and not the, the metaphor of the heart, the body heart, but the idea of the heart and what it actually is, is the unconditional bridge. It is the, the ultimate expression of the magic because to me where science and religion meet is magic. And that is where we can move from the light to the shadows, to the dark, to the light. And we can go all these different places as long as we're healed and safe. Otherwise we'll hide in the shadows or we'll hide in the light and we'll do the light and love thing. And then we'll, you know, still gossip about our friends behind their back and we'll call ourselves vegans and we'll move on to the next moment, you know? And it's just like, at some point we're going to have to recognize that we are really all in this together. And if we can stop building those walls around ourselves, which is, that's where, where my work is really right now is really getting down and saying, okay, where are those walls that are still in the way? Because you just don't remember building them, but you built them to protect yourself. And you're using law of attraction to keep bumping up against the wall and going, how come that's not manifesting? How comes that's not manifesting? And you're going, okay, I must've built a wall there, but I don't remember doing it. So I have to go into the shadow space right? And find where I built that wall to protect myself, you know, and your eighth grade self is like, don't you remember? We, we vowed to never, you know, do that again or be around that again or, you know, love again. Don't you remember when we were in the eighth grade? And you're like, no, I don't remember that. I built a wall. So I wouldn't have to remember that. So, I mean, that's really where we are right now. We're going to use every full moon, every new moon, every retrograde, every solar flare, every excuse in the universe to amplify our momentum we are going to use in our healing journey and mm. it's just going to get more intense so you all i say is you can either let go or be dragged at this point but you're going to return to the scene of your broken heart over and over again this year so mm. looking at at that as a good thing and not, sure right you not right failing. you are not failing you're not manifesting bad things your higher self is putting you right where you need to be so that you can be present so it's not about moving forward it's about what do I need to be present with, right? And how, do, how have I been moving forward and using that as an escape room, escape option, right? Sure. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So it'll be, it'll be an interesting year. Quest workshop that's coming up. Excuse me? Vision Quest workshop that's coming up. It's, yeah, it's a Vision Quest workshop. We're going to start. I'm actually going to be doing it with two other people. Um, I'm going to be doing it because it's the depth of it is important. I'm actually going to be doing it with a man and he's going to have the male perspective. And because, you know, women and men are, are, we're different species when we house a body, when we're in a soul, we're all unified. But when we have a right. body, we're literally like a, you know, chocolate lab and a, a different kind of lab dog, but different species. Like, so a male is very external in his expression and a feminine is very internal in our expression. So I'm, we're going to be able to go into our deep shadow work from both the exterior expression and the interior expression so that we can reach like a bigger audience. So it's going to be about nature and impact and fitness and nutrition and science outwardly focused. And then I'm going to do all the deep shadow work in the interior space with my sound healer. And we're going to create lots of inner journeys because in order to get into those places that you've built walls around, you're going to have to break those walls down and sound and light and meditation. All those things are going to be really powerful for us to kind of like break those walls where we've built them really strong, like Fort Knox. Mm -hmm. um, that's going to be in production uh, first week of April. So that won't even be, that won't even be ready to go for probably the first week of May. Um, sure. And then sure. another thing that we're doing this year is my work is, uh, it's funny because we were talking about which classroom you're teaching. And I, I feel like I've been kind of teaching a PhD like this last year, at least yeah. some upper grad work, you know, quantum physics. Well, I'm going to actually have the opportunity to return to the first grade classroom this year and um, be a part of Melinda um, Johnson's retreat. Um, her, her open road girls, she has a community of over 40,000 women who are just 
badass empowered women who ride bikes to basically set the intention of freedom. And so Love we're it. putting this kind of workshop together at a real baseline personal spiritual development where I can kind of go in that first grade classroom and teach them the healing arts, manifestation tools, um, you know, all the techniques that we, we need in first grade so mm -hmm. that we can quickly get to those higher realms. Now, there's going to be a lot of women that are going to be like, hey, I'm not in first grade. And we'll be like, great, we've got, we've got content and language for you too. But mm -hmm. another thing that's important for us as teachers to be able to, once we've been teaching long enough, to jump around in different classrooms mm -hmm. and be able to substitute here and teach here and multitask because oh, we know that curriculum over there and and as the world's waking up you i mean it's so rapid right now it's so right. rapid. I mean, it's, it's it's unstoppable whether you call it a fad whatever it's great because we're planting seeds and yes. therefore the most important thing we can do is be the example and what does that look like healthy mom right apartment mm -hmm. versus five thousand square foot being a happy mom is the example we want to set right right yes. and at the end of the day it's like happy healed strong women that are vulnerable, that are transparent, you know, healthy men that are okay in their emotional space. It's like, this is where we're moving as a collective. And those are the two things I have coming up this summer. Uh, we'll be in Arkansas at the Open Road Girl Retreat. If you guys have any information about that, just go to the Open Road Girls Facebook page. Um, the, the tickets are like a hundred bucks, I think for like three days. It's right. insane. It's going to be like fest yeah. festival style DJs, music. It's going to be a lot of celebration of empowerment, food trucks, drink trucks, RV parking, motorcycles. I mean, it's going to be ridiculous and awesome. Beautiful. Um, yeah. Yeah. Um, sounds super fun. And, and then we're going, and then I'm taking my teacher training group to Europe because oh, we, awesome. We got invited back. We made such a big ruckus when we went over there. People were like, yeah. what are you? "Oh my god, you have to come back." So we got invited back and uh, we'll do like a week in Spain retreat and we're going to do again um, England and we'll do Ireland again just because they want us back. They want bigger workshops. So I'll, this time I'll actually be able to take my graduated teachers and students with me to help facilitate the workshops because again, I can, I'm one person. Right. It's, it's a village. It takes a village and that's why it's I'm doing teacher training is because it literally takes that village for us to raise and awaken the world. So yeah. that's what we've got uh, going on. So much incredible information, Jess. And I know that um, I know that you've probably opened a lot of eyes during this discussion. And then, as always, you know, everyone who um, is a part of your community, we just we feel really honored to be able to be a part of it. You've um, I know that you've accelerated so many of our um, journeys, and just yeah, just really appreciate you coming on. Thanks, girl. Thank you so much for having me, and I'm so Absolutely. proud of you. So proud I'll of what post, you're doing. Keep kicking uh, out, girl. Thanks, girl. Okay, well, I'm going to post um, all the links and so how you can get a hold of Jess and then the open road tour and all that kind of good stuff. All right. Okay. Have an awesome day. Thanks. Bye, y'all. Bye, everyone.